Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get all the stock dividend data you need right on your Excel and Google Sheets spreadsheet. So you don't have to waste time copy pasting this data for yourself. And so you can make the best dividend investment decisions. The data that we're going to be covering in this video includes historical dividend payments, historical dividend yield, as well as the current dividend yield of any particular company you're looking at. That being said, let's get to it. So starting off, you might be asking yourself, is it possible to use the Google Finance function that's already built into Google Sheets to be able to access the dividend yield of particular companies? And the answer, unfortunately, is not. This data is not available, but if you do want to know how the Google Finance function works, I have a tutorial on that specifically. You can click on the link that shows up right now in the video. However, there are other alternatives that you can use to be able to access this information. So one of the things that you could do is to use import HTML formulas. They already come built into uh, Google Sheets. And then from here, you kind of have to know how to use the function so you can scrape the data from any particular website out there like Yahoo Finance or even a site like Finviz. For the sake of simplicity though, in this video, I'm gonna show you a method that I think it's a lot more simple and that you're gonna like a lot more. Uh, the one requirement is that you do need an account with Y Sheets. You can get it on the add-on store or you can get it on the company's website. Once you have that set up, all you have to do is very simple. You just enter the company ticker. We'll do Apple. And then here, all you have to do is use the wise function that comes built in once you install the add-on, enter the ticker, and you can see how the function works here. So the ticker, parameter, and then after that, the period. So we're gonna do TTM. And what this is gonna do is return the current dividend yield for Apple. As you can see right now, it's loading, and there you go. The cool thing is, is that once you have this built up, you can just change something like the company ticker or even the parameter itself. And you will see how the data will also update along with that new information. The cool thing is that with this information, you can kind of build a screener. So the way you would do that is very simple. You set up your spreadsheet like this, use the wise function again, enter the company ticker or symbol, the parameter, which is dividend yield, and we're gonna lock it in so that it stays as a dividend yield for all the different companies and then for the period we'll do TTM so that gives you the real-time dividend yield based on the stock price and the last dividend payment that was made you can drag it across for all these different companies and boom there you go you're gonna get all the data you need very easily the good thing about this method is that it also works for international stock exchanges so whether you're looking to do this for companies in the nsc the national stock exchange of india in europe or all over the world we cover that data as well so we use the same ticker system as yahoo finance so whatever you see the ticker in yahoo finance that's the ticker you have to use or you can just simply search for the company name so let's do uh, Talos, which is a Canadian stock. So as you can see, it shows up here, Talos Corporation, and this is the Toronto Stock Exchange. So you would do T.TO. I can simply uh, change one of these ones. And as you can see, what's going to happen is that you're going to get the yield for that particular stock as well. To get the historical dividend yield of particular companies is not that much difference. The difference here is that instead of TTM, you would have to select specific periods. So for example, let's say 2021, and then you have to enter the quarter. So, or you could also do the year as well, but in this case, let's do quarterly. So we'll do Q2. And what's going to happen is that you're going to get the historical dividend yield based on the dividend payment paid at that particular period and the close price when the financial statements were released. Now let's talk about how it is that you can get the historical dividend payments that a company has made to investors. So that is the simplest thing that you'll see in this tutorial. All you have to do is change the function. So instead of the wise function, you're going to use the wise price function. And I'm just going to leave this here so you know how the wise price function works. And then you're going to enter the ticker and then you're going to enter dividend. 
and you will see how everything will populate with the date, the dividend, adjust the dividend, payment date, declaration date, and all of this information is historical. So you can go all the way, all the way back to 1985. From here, you can do any calculations you like, and you can also even graph this data so you see it visually. So all you have to do is select the data, click on insert, chart, and as you can see, the dividend is pretty steady, and this is the auto-generated graph by Google Sheets. For those of you looking to make your lives even easier, what you can do is go to Y Sheets and then select Wise Templates. And then from here, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna be able to see this dividend payment analysis. You can click on it. It's gonna ask you to make a copy of this document. I'm not gonna do that because I already have it, so I'm just gonna close it. But once you do that, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna get access to this pre-made template that already has the formulas in place just for you to change the company ticker and get all this data at once. So in this case, this is already calculating dividend payment growth. Uh, it's taking the current dividend and it's calculating the dividend growth rate for the past five years. So if you are a dividend investor, I recommend that you use this template and you can also build your own templates that might be even more powerful than this one using all the techniques that I show you in this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and let me know in the comments if there's any specific type of content that you would like to see next. I'll see you in the next one.